Hello everyone and welcome to the second lecture of our graphic designing class. I am Gautam Sharma from Babathar and I will be guiding you through this course from now on. I apologize that our second lecture was delayed due to some technical difficulties. We are sorry for any inconvenience this caused and we will ensure it doesn't happen again. Moving forward, you can expect a new class every Wednesday and Saturday. This will help us complete the course efficiently and allow you to learn quickly. A fundamental question for anyone starting their graphic designing journey is should I choose a PC or a laptop so who benefits most from a PC and who is laptop better suited for simply put a laptop is ideal for those who travel frequently need to move their workspace easily or often work remotely if you are considering learning at an institution while that certainly a valid path I'm also saying that if you plan to study or work in various locations a laptop offers that portability advantage on the other hand a pc confines you to work on a single workspace once set up it's not something you can easily move around it's important to remember that if you compare a laptop and a pc at the same price point of rupees 60000 the pc will generally offer more processing power this is due to factors like better cooling more space for components So a PC tends to be more powerful for the same investment. Hopefully that clarifies whether a laptop or a PC might be the better choice for you. Now let's discuss the minimum hardware requirements, the key specifications to consider when buying a laptop or a PC for a graphic designing. There are four main components to think about. There are RAM, graphic cards, processor and storage. First, let's talk about RAM. While 8 GB is the absolute minimum, I strongly recommend 16 GB. Based on my experience, running design software on 8 GB often leads to a significant lag. Therefore, 16 GB is much better option for a starting point. So, whenever you are looking at a laptop or a PC, aim for at least 16 GB of RAM. Ideally, going beyond that will only improve the performance. There's practically no upper limit, but 16 GB is solid minimum for smoother tasking. with design application now let's consider the processor for intel i would recommend the i5 7th generation or newer avoid anything below the 6th generation if you are new to this and these technical details sounds a little confusing don't worry just remember that for intel i5 processors aim for a generation 7 or higher and for ryzen processors look for a ryzen 5 3600 or anything better don't go for models below that Keep these recommendations in mind. These are based on my own usage and what I have found to be effective. Simply put, I am recommending these specifications based on my practical experience. Now, let's discuss storage. There are two main types: SSD and traditional hard. You will find options like 256 GB or 512 GB. I recommend aiming for a 512 GB to 1 TB. If your budget allows, 1 TB is very ideal. If not 256 GB or 512 GB can work initially as storage can often be upgraded later so for the primary storage aim for a minimum of 512 GB and ideally 1 TB the second type of storage is a hard drive this is mainly for storing your data the read and the write speeds are slower compared to an SSD you can store all your created files and other data here what is an SSD Primarily, it significantly speeds up software performance. The read and write speeds of an SSD are much faster, which allows design software to run efficiently. If you are not familiar with the technical aspects, just understand that an SSD is crucial for smooth operation when you buy a laptop or a PC for design. A 1 TB hard drive is a good size to ensure you have enough space. Having a 1 TB SSD for your software and a 1 TB hard drive for your data is the best combination. In the beginning, you likely won't be working on extremely complex compositions, so a dedicated graphic card isn't strictly necessary for basic graphic design. A graphics card become more important as your projects become more demanding and software plugins become heavier. If your budget allows, I would recommend getting a laptop or PC with a 4 GB to 8 GB dedicated graphic cards. One advantage of buying a PC is the ability to upgrade components. When buying a laptop, you need to inquire about upgradeability. Can the SSD be improved? Is there space for an additional hard drive? 
when making a purchase are specifically what components can and cannot be upgraded. The same applies to RAM. Some laptops and PCs allow RAM upgrades, while others don't. This is another important question to ask. What will all this cost? If you opt for the minimum specifications I mentioned, you're looking at around rupees 30,000 to rupees 40,000. However, if you go for the more recommended setup I described, which is good for beginners, the cost will be closer to rupees 60,000. This should give you a general idea of the investment required. Now, let's move on to the software that will enable you to become a graphic designer. Today, we will discuss five essential tools. The first tool is Adobe Photoshop. You have likely heard of it. Essentially, any edited photograph you see is likely the result of work done in Photoshop. Photoshop is a raster-based photo editing software, meaning it works with pixel. An image is made up of many pixels. Typically, the social media posts, movie posters and banners you encounter are all created in Photoshop. What makes Photoshop so unique and an industry standard? If you are entering the graphic designing field, Photoshop is a fundamental requirement. When you are looking for a job, what specific capabilities within Photoshop are actually used? It includes all the standard features like text editing, color correction and background removal. But it goes beyond the basics. It also offers advanced filters and effects that are used even by those who create major movie posters. It's a comprehensive package where your creative potential is virtually limitless. Often, there are multiple ways to achieve the same result. As we progress, you will gain a deeper understanding. For now, just listen and absorb as much information as you can. Now, the question is whether Photoshop is paid or a free software. Photoshop is a paid application. However, pre cracked versions are available, which I strongly advise against using. But I also understand that as students or beginners, you might feel you have limited options and can't afford to invest immediately. I'll tell you the best purchasing option short. Due to copyright restrictions, I can't name directly the website that are offering the crack software. You can check our website community for more information. You will find these names in our WhatsApp community. Links to our WhatsApp community where you might find these informations will be provided. If free versions are available, why should you pay? The free versions have significant drawbacks. Just because it's free doesn't mean it's the best option. Free versions often come with viruses, malware and the risk of losing your work. They can also be very laggy. I used them during the first two years of my career. You never know when your work will disappear, when your files won't save, or when the software will freeze. Crack software is essentially a hack. You can't fully rely on it. On the other hand, when you purchase directly from Adobe, many of these issues are reduced. However, even the paid version can lag or experience unsaved work if you're not careful. These issues are more likely to occur if your system specifications are very low. But if you build a decent PC as I recommend, Photoshop will have minimal lag. If you experience issues 10 times a month with the cracked version, you might only encounter them once or twice with the paid version. There is a significant difference. You will also need to develop the habit of pressing Ctrl plus S frequently to save your work. Well, where can you download Photoshop? Simply go to adobe.com this is the Indian version of website. You will see view plans and pricing here. Click on this. You will find various pricing options. A monthly subscription for Photoshop is currently at Rs. 733. The entire Creative Cloud suite of apps is listed at Rs. 2000 per month. Personally, I don't subscribe to this as it's quite expensive and always not necessary. I recommend going to the students and teachers section. Consider the Creative Cloud All app, which costs around Rs. 640 per month. This is the best value you can subscribe for the entire year, and the monthly payments will be deducted accordingly. I find this option the most appealing because as you can see under Apps Included, you get almost everything you will need as a beginner. You can choose to pay yearly or monthly based on your needs. This suite provides everything you need and you also get access to additional apps to try out. We will be discussing Illustrator and InDesign which are also included in this package. It's an all-in-one solution. Installation is very straightforward. 
if you purchase it, the installation process is usually automatic. It's quite simple. Just download and it will install. If you encounter any issues, our WhatsApp community is there to help. You can ask your questions there. Now, let's talk about our second software, Adobe Illustrator. Yes, it's also from As I mentioned, Adobe is a dominant force in the design industry. What is Illustrator? Illustrator is a vector-based software. To put it simply, when you create something in Photoshop, it will become pixelated when you zoom in because it's made of pixels. The image quality will degrade beyond a certain zoom level, no matter how many pixels it initially has. But when you create something in Illustrator and zoom in, this pixelation doesn't occur. This is because Illustrator is not pixel-based or raster-based. It's a vector-based software. That's the fundamental characteristics of vector graphics. When would you use Illustrator? If you need to create a logo, an icon or design a brochure, it's suitable for both print and digital formats. However, it's primarily used for printing because high quality is essential for printed materials. Many people also do general design work in Illustrator. While you can create high resolution designs in Photoshop if you have a powerful system. If you need to create very large designs like banners measured in feet, Illustrator is the more practical choice. The same considerations regarding cracked versions apply here as I mentioned for Photoshop. Cracked versions are also available for Illustrator. The setup process is very similar. You simply click the download button. After purchasing, it will usually install automatically. The third software we will discuss is not from Adobe, it's Figma. Figma is an online cloud-based design software. The Adobe software I mentioned, Photoshop and Illustrator both consume significant RAM and require a good system to run smoothly. Figma, on the other hand, can function well even on less powerful systems. This software is particularly designed for web design and app design, specifically UI UX. Figma is an industry standard tool because it offers features crucial for the website development process. You can create prototypes to explain simply in the context of website creation. When you click a button, there might be an animation or hovering over, it might change the color. You can design all these interactive elements in Figma first and then provide the design to the coder. Saying, this is how we want the website to behave. Now, please build it using code. Figma primarily handles the design phase. The designer creates the visual and interactive elements, then the coder's role is to build the actual website. The same principle applies to apps. The entire UI UX you see in the apps is often designed using Figma. Is it paid or free? It's completely free for individual users. Some features mainly for team collaborations are only available in paid plans, but you likely won't need them. Initially as an individual, the basic free plan will suffice for most of your needs. I use it myself. FigJam, their collaborative whiteboard feature, is a personal favorite. It's very efficient and doesn't lag even with a lot of elements. To access it, simply go to figma.com. You will find the links to all the software options in the description below. If you prefer not to search, you can find the links there. You will see a website like this. It highlights, Figma helps design and development teams build great products together. You will mostly see examples of UI UX animations created here. However, you can also create simpler graphic designs in it. Those that are more text and shape based and doesn't require extensive photo editing. If you already have an account, just if not, click get started for free and you can begin creating. Our fourth application is Adobe InDesign. While Photoshop and Illustrator can also handle some of the tasks in InDesign performs, InDesign is specifically designed for extensive text based layouts. For example, magazines and brochures, which often have multiple pages and a large amount of text, are best created in InDesign. You might wonder why these different software options exist. You can create PDFs in both Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. But the key difference is that while you can create a page or two in Photoshop or Illustrator, when you are dealing with many pages, say 30, 60, 70 or even a whole book, it becomes impractical. You'd need very powerful hardware for that, a lot of RAM, a high-end processor and a strong graphic card. The files also become very large, which isn't ideal as it consumes a lot of storage. InDesign is specifically optimized for these kinds of multi-page documents. This tool excels at creating multi-page layouts. Any brochure design, 
catalog a similar document can easily manage in indesign you also get access to indesign within the creative cloud suite if you subscribe with the student id the name of our fifth and final software is coral draw coral draw and illustrator are quite similar in functionality so why are we even discussing coral draw in this video because you will encounter coral draw frequently in the real world if you go to get a business card made the designer will likely open coral draw if you ask for a banner or a wedding card shopkeepers often use coral draw why don't they use illustrator which is considered an industry standard software sometimes especially with older computer systems updated versions of design software can become quite resource intensive due to their many features if someone is using an older system they might opt for an older version of coral draw which is less demanding for a simple business card with just text they don't need very powerful software recent versions of adobe illustrator can be quite heavy coral draw offers all the essential features of illustrator often with a lighter footprint you can create print banners posters logos all those things in coral draw it's generally less resource intensive however i would want to be clear that for our learning we won't be focusing on coral draw i just want to introduce it as a software you might encounter you should primarily focus on using illustrator because it's an industry standard coral draw is more for specific context it's good to be aware of both illustrator and coral draw but if you learn photoshop well which is crucial then illustrator integrates seamlessly with it it's a complete suit so that the system works well together you can easily bring elements from illustrator into photoshop for editing similarly you can transfer elements from photoshop to illustrator this level of integration isn't as smooth with coral draw coral draw is more of a stand alone application it doesn't have integrated photo editing capabilities like photoshop it's purely vector based you can only do a vector based work in it both pre and paid versions of coral draw are available for information on cracked versions check our whatsapp community For the paid version go to coraldraw.com you will also find the link in the description on coraldraw.com looking at the pricing the annual plan cost around rupees 666 per month totaling about rupees 8000 however compared to adobe this can be more expensive as it's for individual software with the student id you can get the entire adobe suite for around rupees 640 per month That's why many new designers and companies are increasingly choosing Illustrator over Corel Draw. I have given you a general overview of these key software options. Finally, I'll show you what the Adobe Creative Cloud interface looks like. I have covered the essentials. Now, I will give you a quick look at the Adobe Creative Cloud interface. If you purchase the Adobe suite, you will also see a home screen similar to this. In the app section below, you will find all the applications you can install. They also have different versions available. For example, when I hover over Illustrator, you can see version 29.5. Photoshop, Lightroom and InDesign also have different versions. These are typically updated annually with new features being introduced. Don't be confused about which version to install. If your system meets the requirements, you can install the latest version as it often includes useful new features like generative fill. However, If you have a slightly older or less powerful laptop or PC, you can choose an earlier version. For example, with Photoshop, you will see an open option in my case, but you will likely see an install option here. You can select which version you want. You can opt for the 2019 or 2018 version. The current latest version is V29. The 2019 or the 2018 versions will work well even on less powerful machines. So. that covers the essential software in our upcoming videos we will begin learning photoshop why photoshop first because it's an industry standard tool and you can design almost anything with it as i mentioned earlier the possibilities are endless your creativity is the only limit you will also quickly grasp the fundamental design principles through photoshop including color theory and other essential concepts in the videos to come we will cover photoshop from a to z from basic to advanced techniques that concludes our second lecture i look forward to seeing you in our next video